been here in Rosedale, Colorado. I was born on March 13, 1897, in a little house that was located where the George Morgan home is now. These things I am about to tell you of Louisville are related to me were related to me by my mother and father, Thomas and Mary Mitchell. My mother Mary Smith came to this country from Lancashire, England with her parents when she was twelve years old. Her father, Edward Smith, made a couple of trips to this country from England before he brought his family and settled in Streeter, Illinois. He engaged in brick making and had two brickyards. One was run by the family alone. There were 11 boys and two girls. After a few years passed, the family moved on to Missouri. My mother worked in a mine boarding house, and that is where she met my father. The friendship blossomed into a romance, and August 30th, 1875, they were married in Mobley, Missouri. My father helped mother with the dishes. That was the, the only way they did their courting. In a few months, they came to Marshall, Colorado, where their first child was born. In 1877, they came to Louisville, being one of the first three families to settle here. Now, do you want the name of the families on there? Yeah, I do. And there was uh, George Giles and uh, Niehoff and Mitchell. They were the first three. I don't know too much about my father, but he was born in Wales. He was reared by his two brothers. As his folks died when he was about four years old. As a young man, he worked his way coming over the, on a ship. He first landed in New York. When they heard a vein of coal had been found, they came here from Marshall, and my father got involved in drilling for coal. As years went by, uh, coal began to be the issue all over. People began coming, and the little town began to flourish, and Lewis Milwaukee and C.C. Welch had money to back them, and in a few years there were companies came and started drilling, coal mines were cropping up all over the place. In fact, there were, there were really good times. My father got his citizenship papers in the year March 20, 1883 in Boulder, Colorado. They were about 15 mines here in the surrounding territory. Uh, is that all right? That's great. Uh, so goes. The settlement was started on one street called First Street, and now it's Front Street. There was a couple of stores, a livery stable, and about three boarding houses, and several little rough-built homes that people lived in, and about 13 saloons on that one street. My father owned one where Camp's Body Shop is located. It later was destroyed by fire. Mining was entirely different in those days. No electricity, everything had to be done by hand. There was a tool called an auger, about three foot long, that had a drill on one end and a couple of places for each hand. It had to be worked by hand to drill a hole in the coal. Each miner had to use his own dynamite and make a roll out of newspaper. Then had to roll it up and put a squib, something like a broom straw, on, and then put a cap on it and place it in the hole and light the squib. Everyone had to get out of the entry when it went off. The coal would come tumbling down and had to be shoveled with a broad blade shovel into the mine cars. Sometimes the place was so low a miner would have to get on his knees to shovel. When the car was loaded, they had a metal check which with their number on it, which was hung on the car. Then the trip, the mule, then the trip mule drawn would come along and put up, the, pull up the cars, and they would go up on a cage. The check weighman on top would keep track by your number, and on payday you got the credit for cars you loaded. A coal miner never saw the sun in winter. He went to work in the dark and came home in the dark. I don't think there was a month went by that someone didn't get hurt or killed and would be brought out on a stretcher. Many of them would go and get overcome from black damp and powder smoke. The only light they had was an oil can shaped like a, a small teapot put on the pit cap above the beak. The first mines were in 
were the old Louisville and the leader. The coal strikes for miners were very prevalent as they fought for better conditions and more pay. Uh, different men formed companies and came here to invest. At one time there were in a neighborhood of 15 mines. The Acme, Hecla, Rex No. 1, Rex No. 2, Monarch, Centennial 1 and 2, Vulcan, Sunnyside, Matchless, Capital, Standard, Brooks, and the Highway, and the Thomas Mine. The big companies were Rocky Mountain Fuel, National Fuel, Nisbet and Peltier in the Boulder Valley, and a few smaller companies. Payday was every other Saturday, and boy did they ever celebrate. The women weren't allowed in the saloons. In 1910 there was a whopper of a coal strike. It lasted five years, and all the support, such as it was, came from the United Mine Workers. How well I remember, money came in every Saturday and would be given out. The man of the family got three dollars a week, the woman a dollar and a half, and each child seventy-five cents. Of course, people in those days were very conservative. They had to be. There was very little entertainment. Folks had to make it themselves by having dances and picnics along the creek on the Mayhoffer farm, which had a grove of trees, and the old rock house by Hubert Wanberg's had a, had a big big park down there. Of course, everybody walked and took a basket full of food and kegs of beer. There wasn't a doctor to be had or a mortician. My mother was a pretty good one, and she would always go and do all she could with, with home remedies. If anyone passed away, they were never embalmed they, like they are today. The, the men would make a trough out of wood slabs and put the body in it and pack ice around it. No doctor until Dr. Wolfer came to Louisville, and then Burns and Dr. Solon, and later on we had six. We had Wolfer and Crannell, Dr. Castish, Wordferger, Snare, and Miller. Some of them were mine doctors, and whoever wanted three dollars kept from their pay each month could pay the doctor their choice. The first school was two rooms in a building where the trophy shop is. Then the growth was getting larger, so there was a two-story building put up, four rooms, two up and two down, at the corner of what is now Spruce and Jefferson. Then in 1903, four more rooms were built on, and the whole ten grades were in it, first and second grades being in the little red brick, which is now the recreation building. When the four rooms were built, that was the activity place of the town. They held dances, box socials, and ice cream socials, and parties of all description. The town kept getting larger and extending west. Then there was two streets. Second Street was what is now our main street, and business was getting better all the time. There were grocery stores, drug stores, small restaurants, and later, uh, Two movie houses, the Rex and the Isis, were going strong and should pic showed pictures every night, sometimes vaudeville shows. Tom Metz and Aunt Todd were the owners. Every Thursday night was ladies' night, and they gave a dish to all the ladies, cup, saucer, plate, whichever you wanted. In fact, I have a set of the cups and saucers today. Finally, Louisville was incorporated in 1882. We had a Redmond's Hall, two stories had large rooms of lodge rooms upstairs and a banquet room. It was made of red brick and the bricks were made on the site of the Catholic Church. It was located where the Sisters Convent is located. The downstairs had a stage and a wonderful dance floor. Some of the good shows that were held in Denver used to come and the hall would be packed. Dances were held every two weeks. That was payday for the miners. Everybody in town would be there. A good orchestra from Denver was always hired, and the dance would go on from 9 p.m. until 2. And then we would pass the hat for more money to go on until maybe around 4 or 5. Or maybe go to a hoedown or an, uh, oh, down at Jervis's barn and come home at 6 a.m. Boy, those were never forgotten days. We have had a lot of tragic things happen in our little town, but we all stuck together and helped to work things out. 
if the old pioneers could come back today, they would be amazed to see what a beautiful community has been born through all their hardships and perseverance. My father, Tom Mitchell, was the first policeman and the first fire chief. A hand pumper and bucket brigade was all they had to fight against fires. Water was a big problem. The ditch, now known as Mayhoffers, runs straight down to First Street, front, that's Front Street, along the back of Steinball's store into the creek. Everyone had a rain barrel to catch water when it would rain. Drinking water had to be boiled and the ditch water used to wash clothes and so forth. Transportation was a big problem. If anyone wanted to go to Denver, they would have to ride in the caboose on the bobtail freight that took the coal cars to that took the coal cars loaded to Denver. Then it finally had one passenger coach attached to it. And then as time went by we had a passenger train that came through here about eight thirty AM and came back around ten thirty PM at night. It went to Great Bull, Wyoming. Then about 1907, the Denver near to Urban put on trolley cars run by electricity and transportation was wonderful. They run every couple of hours and passed at the depot here. One would go to Boulder and one to Denver. There was a junction by the Monarch Mine and the cars passed there, one going to El Dorado and the other one to Boulder by way of Marshall. The cars were run on electric trolleys. Then in 1926, automobiles were coming in fast. The need for the Denver into Urban fell off and they were taken off and the company dissolved. And since that time, we have had very poor ways to, to travel. Okay, now I was the, I'm interested in um, this Front Street having been called First Street. Uh -huh. Now, was that ever called Main Street? No. That was never no, Main Street. No. Not to my noise. Well, okay. There were just the two streets. And then uh, this house up here of, uh, oh, where Beverage's house, you wouldn't know it as Beverage's house, I guess. But across from where, you know where Mrs. Rhodes lives. Yes. Well, that house across on the corner where the minister lives, it used to be yeah. the Methodist minister. Mm. That was uh, way out in the country. Oh. And that was the only house there was up in here. Oh. And I've heard Mother tell uh, people by the name of Fishback built that house and lived there. Hmm. So was it a farm? It was sort of a farm, yeah. Just country. And it was only the, uh, it was the only home up here, the only house. It was like going out into the country. Well, okay, you know, I had said that uh, on that old picture that you ran across, you know, and I put that in the paper, and they, on there it's called Main Street, and I knew sec Main Street had been Second Street mm -hmm. at one time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was, I don't know, of course, who well, wrote Well, I don't me. know who wrote that on that uh, paper. Somebody wrote that on there. I don't know who it was. But that was definitely Front Street uh -huh. or probably yeah. First Street mm -hmm. in those days. Do you have any idea when they stopped calling them First and Second Street? No, I don't. I guess it would be about, well, see, my folks come here in 1877. And it would be about probably the year I was born, you know. Like, mm -hmm. See, I was born in 1897. And that would be 20 years, you see, after they came here. Mm, there's been a lot to so develop, that, too. So there was a lot went on in there, you see. And, and none of this is on record, very little of it's on record in newspapers, so it's hard to know. Oh, now, the, you mentioned the leader mine. Do you know where that was? Right down there in the corner of Mayhofer's farm. South of the in Louisville mine. Huh? South of the Louisville mine. The old Louisville mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who, who ran? Was that just a, pri a local group, or was that? Well, it wasn't a big mine, you know. Just, just the group got together and drilled and found coal there. It wasn't a big mine. Was that one of the, was that early, like, mm -hmm. when the Louisville? That was, uh, I think those were the first two mines around here. And the uh, Capitol Mine, where was that? Well, the Capitol was down near Lafayette. Oh. The, that's not a, it wasn't a very old mine. The Thomases used to run that, you know, and Charlie Lottie was, was a, a good investor in that mine because he was, a, he was a leader of it. And he was married to the Zarina girl, Rose 
Yeah. Okay. You you um and then Thomas's was up here, you know. Yes. You know where the Thomas mine was? No. Well, it was the same company that, that run that. Uh, that, but it wasn't the mattress. It was a different mine. No, no. The mattress is over this way. It's over, you know where the New Baptist Church is? Yeah. Well, you go up that road at the end here and turn and go up that road that brings you out into the Wood Brothers Homes up yeah. there. And you can see where that mine was. It was right up there in those. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I thought maybe that was the matchless mine. Cause no, the mattress is right up here, you know. It's quite a dump there. Right up here. There's used. two separate dumps? There's no dump left up at the Thomas mine. Oh, just not too big a one, yeah. you know. But you can tell. Of course, I knew where the mine was, and that's why. I, but it's right there. You can't miss it seeing yeah. this. You'd know where, that a mine had been there, you yeah. know. Yeah, I, can, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that. But I didn't, and then the mattress was just more west. Yeah, the mattress was more right straight west here. No, but the Thomas Mine was never called anything but Thomas Mine. Thomas Mine is what it's called. Okay. And it was the same company, old Nick Thomas and, and these boys and Charlie Liley. And, and then uh, in the sunny side over there, my dad helped to drill that mine. That's well, below the track where, where the monarch is, you know. Yeah. You know them dumps out there? Yeah. Well, that's Sunnyside, and they call, also called it the Big Six. Well, there was quite a company of them. There was George Dalby and Ed Carvet and, and Charlie Liley and, oh, my dad. But there was quite a bunch in that company that drilled that. But they used to take quite a little coal out of them. Well, oh, our, now, now there wasn't a town at Sunnyside then, was there? No, and that that Sunnyside, my dad was working there uh, when I was married, and that was in 1915. Well, now, would these people then would not have been involved with the unions. This was uh, an no. indep independent. Uh huh. Yeah. I got my dad's old union card. He he joined the union over to Erie. You see, Erie was the first coal mine camp around here. Well, then they were able to give um, work to the miners who yeah. didn't get to work in the union yeah. as long as they could hire. That's uh, no matter when they had a strike for for something, you know, they'd always be. Outsiders come in, and it's a scab, they used mm -hmm. to call them, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, that place over there at the Heckler Mine, they had quite a camp over there. You know, and they had the fence all wired with electricity, and you couldn't climb over the fence or nothing. And the, the guards used to bring the kids here to school. Mm -hmm. uh, if they hadn't, why well, there was always fight after fight, you know, with kids, you know how our kids are. Mm -hmm. The guards would come and get them when it was time for them to go home and bring them to school. And then they had a a searchlight on a tripod over there. It's in that picture. You can see it. But it don't show the, the tripod pod that had the machine gun on it. Mm -hmm. But it been on up to over east a little bit? Uh -huh. Just out of yeah. the picture? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And that's when it shot down here in the town, you know. Yeah. There's bullet holes in some of the houses down there with the track. Oh, are there? Yeah, well, there was a couple of bullet holes in the house that Leonard lived in down there. It's probably been covered up with siding. Oh, yeah, it probably has now. Well, now, did the bullets come into Main Street? Oh, yeah, oh, they were sharing all over here. But nobody was hurt here, were they? No, there was... Nobody got shot or anything. Do you think they shot high to avoid that, or was that just the way it was just the people weren't... Well, yeah, I don't know. The men all, they have twin ditches. You know that ditch that runs by... That farm over there where um, Munzies live. Mm -hmm. Well, there's twin ditches there. There was two ditches, mm -hmm. and that's where the Union men were in those ditches. See, mm -hmm. and the, they they got word what was going to happen, so they were all armed and went over into those ditches. Mm -hmm. How many days was this? Were they involved in that kind of activity? Was that a, a year or a couple of weeks or just a couple of days? Oh, or? for five years. They did that all the time off and on. Mm -hmm. And then 
So then what actually prompted the militia to come? Well, it was uh, the disturbance that was going on. But why? But the mili militia was only here about a week. And it rained all the time they were here. And oh, they were a dirty bunch of people. You know, I think there'd been a lot of fights and it hadn't been such bad weather. And then they took them out and they sent the Federals in, you know. Yeah. But what, was there any actual activity that prompted them to come at that particular time? Well, that's when they had that shooting. Uh, and they got they got off the, everybody was down to the depot, you know, to welcome them coming in. How did know. they know they were coming? The militia, well, oh, well you know, it circulates yeah. around. <laughs> and the, they, the train stopped up there on Murphy's Hill and they all got out and lined up along the hill and started shooting down into the crowd. And boy, you ought to see the people scatter. <laughs> it was running every direction. Well, why did they do that? That's, I don't suppose that's just the knew. tactics they pulled, you know. They weren't for the Union people at all. Oh, I guess not. Uh, they fought against it. But when the Federals came in, while we had the band down there and everything, we had a big time. You know, we used to have a pretty good band here in town. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the Jayco some. Brothers and... Um, and they took photographs. And uh, what was that guy's name? Al Filoshoni. They they were the leaders of it. And they really had a good band. And, and they, they went out to meet them. Mm -hmm. Well, how how long were, were the federal troops here then? Well, they were here quite a while. For a camp. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many? Well, there was a whole regiment of them. Really? They had their camp down there on Harney's Farm across the baseball park. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, their tent camp down there. How did they ever come into town? Oh, yes, yes. They went with the girls here and everything. Mm -hmm. Did any of them stay? Do you know? No, I don't think so. And then there was two, a two-story house across the road where the where the fabricant place is. Mm -hmm. And that's where the officers used to live, in mm -hmm. there. And they were here a year? Oh, they were here quite a while. Mm -hmm. But there was never any friction between the federal troops oh, and the no, local people. Oh, uh, no. No, they, they mixed with the people real good. People used to have them for dinner, you know. And, oh, really? and uh, they, were, they were real nice kids. Well, they were men. They weren't kids. Everybody was so glad to see them when they come in. Oh, they really were glad to see them. Oh, was, yes. They were just being funny. No, they were glad to see them because they had a big... Well, they had a parade and everything when they came in. So then that would have forced the uh, guards to have stopped shooting then, wouldn't it? Yeah, they could. That's what, why they sent it in, they sent them in, you know, to keep peace. Now, did they go into Lafayette also? Or was there yes, still? Yes, they had some down in Lafayette, too. Okay. But, now, was this 1914 when they came, or did they come sooner than that? Well, they came before that. It was in about 1912, I say. 12, I imagine. Well, now, and so then the shooting would have come, would have happened before 1914. Yeah. In those houses. Yeah, it did. Okay. But it, is, it, it still took three years to get the strike settled. It was still in the 1915 before the strike was ever it took settled. Five years, yeah. It was five years. Every day, you know, they'd think, oh, well, it'll settle tomorrow. It'll be settled tomorrow. It went on for five years. Well, now, do you remember ever hearing them talk about uh, what sort of benefits were they able to get at the end of the strike? Well, they didn't gain very much. You know, they never do in a strike. Mm -hmm. The operators won't give in to them. They, they don't gain very little. Well, now, were they still trying to get an eight-hour day? Or had that been settled earlier? I mean, you know, like... No, I think they got the eight-hour day. April 1st, I think, was supposed to be eight-hour day, is it? April 1st. You mean that's still now uh -huh. observed? Yeah. Eight-hour day, I think it's the first of April. Oh, I've never heard anybody talk about that. Haven't you? I'm going to call it eight-hour day. Well, now, and you think that they were still, that was something they were still working for in the yeah, 19th century? Uh-huh. And then, of course, more money. Well, yeah. A miner didn't get much, you know, for loading them big cars of coal. Mm -hmm. Some people thought they got as much as they did when they had to buy the coal, you know. Mm -hmm. But a miner didn't get but very little. And then he had his own track to lay, and he had, had all of his stuff to buy, you know. 
They used to have a powder house, and the men would go there when they needed powder with a powder can, and have to buy their own powder and fire the shots and everything. Well, I, I have heard that, well, it seemed to me they were striking in, in 1903 for the eight-hour day, and and I'm I'm not sure when it was finally instituted, but I think they had a well, lot of Well, I think strikes. that's what they fought for and what they was fighting for. But they, and they finally did uh -huh. get that in an eight-hour day. And, but they didn't make much more money, did they? No. Mm -hmm. Did they get, suppose they got any other kinds of benefits? Or was the eight-hour day oh, about yeah. it? I don't, I don't just remember. But I imagine they gained a little, but not near as much as what they wanted. They never do, you know. Well, or as the sacrifices yeah. they had to make to get it. People went in, had to go in debt, you know. I don't know how the grocery stores here carried people like they did. Well, they had a um, union store also. Do you remember yeah, that? my brother-in-law run that for a while, and it was run on a non-profit basis, you know. They got the stuff, but they, they didn't charge any more than what they paid for it. Do you remember what years that was running? It was about 1912 or 13, I think. It was just during that strike. Mm -hmm. And it was down there where, uh, I think, where your printing shop is now. Yeah, that's, uh, mm -hmm. Henry be, Hawkins was telling me. Used to be a store in there. Yeah, yeah. That's, I just thought that was where it was. Yeah. Well, My brother-in-law wrote it for a while. Oh. Margie, Margie McNulty's father. Margie Stephen. Marjorie. How's he your brother-in-law? Hmm? How is he your brother-in-law? How are you related? Marjorie's my niece. Yeah, well, I My sister. sister's daughter. Oh, your sister was... My sister's husband, Brennan. Oh. Joe Stevens. Oh. Well, now, is, oh, and that, now, this wasn't the, the... It was Tom Stevens who was killed. This yeah, was well, that was his son. His son, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was killed in the mother. That would have been Marge's brother, mm -hmm. older yeah. brother, and older brother. Well, lucky there was only one. There was three of them worked over there, you know, mm -hmm. but they worked on different shifts. Yeah. yeah. As you say, though, I think there were an awful lot of people hurt. Oh, I yeah. It was, mm -hmm. there was. I don't know how anybody would have gotten used to it, but I suppose they had to. Well, you kind of expected it, you know. Why, do you remember who owned the rock house? You said that you went out there to picnics. Do you remember who lived there? I don't know who owned it then, but George Cogbury used to own it. And he was a mining man. Did he own a large area of land out there? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that, there's that lake out there I just saw is Cogbury Lake. Yeah. So he must have owned it. Yeah, he owned quite a bit of ground in there. I wish... Uh, um, we could do something to restore that house. <laughs> it's a shame to let it go to ruin like that, isn't it? Yes, it is. I don't know what it could be. Uh, what are they doing about the old elevator down here? I don't know. Um, I suppose the urban renewal made them No, I don't think so. I think Charlie's just doing that on his own. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what they're going to use it for. That would make a nice museum, wouldn't it? Well, I, a lot, there could be a lot of nice things. But I like guess there's a lot of machinery in there yet, you know. Well, that could be cleaned out. Mm -hmm. It could be an interesting place. I think that's good. Why, now, oh, I wanted to ask about the school. You said the very first one was in the trophy shop, or I mean, where well, the, the corner shop. there. It was two rooms. But it, now, there was never one across the street where the laundry is. It was no, always where I remember it. It was on the other side. Uh, two rooms? Mm -hmm. But now that would have just been, because if they built one in, um, in 18, if they had one built in 1880, they couldn't, they didn't, they didn't have school there for very long. No, right? it wasn't very long. Mm -hmm. just because there got to be too many kids, you know, they couldn't take care of them. Mm -hmm. So that's when they built those four rooms up here in that old building. Now, do you have any idea when the Red Brick School was built? I think in about 
liking it more, but it takes time. Not everybody's as easy to get hold of as you <laughs> they, Well, or, you know, you make an appointment and get some more of these. Oh, and you said we asked about the two theaters, the Rex and the mm -hmm. Isis, and that was running in about 1913. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. During the strike. Mm -hmm. Now, the um, dances at Redmond Hall, uh, what were the years? When was that building built? What was the year that was built? We, we probably have that. I think you have it. But, uh, so the dances then all through that period? Okay, it's, in the, it's, in the, it's in the paper. Yeah. I have the paper somewhere, so well, it's in there when it was built. I, I made copies of that. When it was torn down, yeah. they were storing mm -hmm. it, so I made copies. Okay, then your dad was fire chief. Now, do you happen to know anything about that, when that started, the fire department? See, Billy Austin belonged to the firemen, too. That was Lois's grandfather. You know? yeah. And I, I know Mother and, and Mrs. Jesse Austin, uh, and the women and the men got together, and they made them suits. And they was red flannel pants and jackets, and they were trimmed with brass buttons. I've got some of the buttons around here yet. If I can, they're downstairs with some of that uh, junk, I guess. Really? Uh huh. And uh, they said, "Boy, they really look nice, you know. They, they really showed up." <laughs> they didn't. Uh, they wanted them all to look dressed and look alike, you know. So the women got together and made them made these suits. Does anybody has a picture of that? No, I don't know. I wouldn't have one. You know, I was sitting here thinking before you came, it's too bad we don't take pictures of things when we, when we see them like that. Now, there's a lot of things here in town that we should have taken pictures of them, you know. Mm -hmm. That's right. But you don't think at the time that it's uh, We don't always mark them either. To, to, you know, well, that's right, too. Well, there's in the ordinances, in the minutes for the trustees of the town, uh, it says that they, well, it says when they set up an ordinance to form the fire department. But I'm pretty sure that there was a fire department before that ordinance, and I wonder, I don't know how to go about finding out when it got started, though. 1893, I think, was when the ordinance was drawn up, but it's, um, about sometime in there, I'm not positive. I mean, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I've got it down someplace. But um, I, I don't know how to go about finding out about that. Who would know that? I don't either. Unless maybe, maybe you might have had some date on or something. No, she might. I haven't talked to her. I haven't. I've been, I've been talking to her, but we haven't gotten together. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, you and then the water. You were telling me about how the water was just what yeah. you could get out of the ditches. Uh -huh. You know when that was organized into when they got it. Uh, oh, well, that was uh, shortly after my folks came here in eighteen mm -hmm. in eighteen seventy seven. They would have had to have gotten that. That's the only way that that they had to get them water. Yeah. Well, they would have gotten a water system developed. Oh yeah, fairly. And so later on, they did. Uh -huh. And then when they'd be a fire, you know, they had a used bucket. They had a bucket brigade and a pumper on there. You've seen pictures of men on each side and a pumper had a handle on, you know, and you pump it up and down and get the water going. Well, that's, they had one of those. That's the kind of machine they had, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did they have many fires in those first couple of years? Well, I don't think too many because there weren't too many places where they could, mm -hmm. couldn't really have one. Do you remember if, ever hearing anything about the uh, hotel fires? There was one, I know, but I don't know what year. I really don't know much about it. No. I don't really know which hotel. Yeah, and there were... Um, down there across from Thomas is on that lot there that's... You know, that used to be a boarding house there. 
true story, a lady demon room. Mm. And then on the other corner, where Thomas' store is, there was a big one there, and that was old lady Ames's. That mm. was a true story. Mm. And then down the street where my or Chavis lived, mm. that was a boarding house, two story. Mm. And Mrs. Lemon run that. Where was where did the Wilsons have a boarding house? Well, now, the, the Phillips 66 station down there is the building that was moved down there from up where Jensen's canteen is. And it used to be a boarding house. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. the, the, where the building, or that building was, the boarding house, where, where the 66 station is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they remodeled it, you know. They, mm -hmm. they used to have be two stories and had two windows in the front upstairs. Well, they remodeled all of that. But that, that was moved down from up there where Jensen's store is. And it used to be a boarding house up there. I was trying to find out what happened to the boarding house out at the Hecla. And I had heard it had burned down. And then somebody said, no, it was moved there to the corner of this Phillips 66. And then they called back and said, no, that that was wrong. Mm -hmm. And But it had been moved in from someplace, hadn't it? Uh -huh. That yeah. building. But it used to be right there where Jensen's store is. But now the boarding house out at Hecla did burn down. Yeah, I think it did. You know, and, and that where Foster lived was the canteen over there, you know. Yeah. Like a pool hall. A casino. Casino. Yeah. You know, I'd, um, I'd heard that. Well, now, do you have any idea of all when that brick building was torn down there on that corner? I think it was. I don't know when it was torn down. It used to be the old brick store they used to call it. The grocery store in there. And old Chris Rosenbaum ran a grocery store and a market in there. After the company store moved down. Mm -hmm. That would have been after the store down on the next yeah. building. Yeah. Well, it was it was in the process of being torn down when when uh, Marie. Well, I'll say Marie Helbert. You know who I mean. Yes. Yeah. When her father got killed, because they had a there used to be a boardwalk run all around that, They're around. And they had that all fenced off with boards. Mm -hmm. He was coming up across the crossing down there, you know, mm -hmm. that morning. Mm -hmm. The big uh, Humberger stopped him for his license. He kind of stuck there into that. Mm -hmm. And I guess he'd been, I think he'd been after him and after him, and the town board was kind of pushing him to get it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I guess old Ballister was laying for him that morning. He had that rifle on the seat of his wagon. And Vic stopped him and he pulled that out and shot him over his head. And I will forget his brain just slapped off. All of that fence. Oh, God. And you know, he run up. He he got, he was in the wagon, you know, when he, sh when he hit him. And he uh, beat the horse to death to get up to the other corner and turn. And Mary Carvel was living in that house where Mrs. Rhodes lives. Mm -hmm. And he turned there to go out to the Monarch Mine, you know. Well, Joe Schrockland was coming up the street, and he ran in there, and he says, Mary, have you got a gun? Have you got a gun? Give me a gun. Well, she didn't know what, was, what he wanted it for, you know. So she said, yes, I got a gun, but what do you want a gun for? Well, by that time, he was gone, or Joe Schrockland could have killed him. Uh, but, she wasn't, uh, she, but she didn't know what he wanted the gun yeah. for, you know. Yeah. And he never was found, was he? No. He went over there to that old... He's Chaucer's over there, and he hidden, you know, until like, mm -hmm. and then he got down there with them North Denver walks, and they got him out of the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The house used to be there where bars is, you know, where Jack Bar. Oh. And that old Peace Chaucer used to live there. Oh. And he hid him out there. But th at that time, people didn't know he was there. No. All the hills, everybody was out there hunting, you know, but they didn't know where he was. We heard after that they hit him down the toilet. 
took the seat off the toilet and pushed him down there. A lot around the edge, you know, where the dirt was. He lay down there until it got dark and then they got him out of there. But I've heard in not too long ago where he died. Oh someplace really? in Canada. Oh really? I don't suppose that's something more than anybody else. Unless Marie sure. might know something about it, and maybe you could talk to her about it. Let's see. She knows what's up. Does she? And uh, I sure left her mother in a bad fix, so you know she had six children. And then one of her brothers. Yeah, yeah. Now, when that happened, that brick store was still standing, though. Yeah. It was condemned, you know, and it was going to be torn down because they had that wooden fence all around it. They wouldn't let anybody walk on that sidewalk. And it was a board walk. And there was a ditch run along below because it was kind of built up off the edge of the ditch. Well, that was in the minutes, too. They had a meeting, special meeting that night after that happened, mm -hmm. and um, so we had, we had yeah. that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was terrible. Well, there's been lots of tragedies happening with those now. Well, they have. They think they about it, and, and there used to be a family lived down there in the house next to Katie Smith's down there. Their name was Perna. P-E-R-N-A. And he stabbed his wife in the back with a nice pick. And I was just a kid, you know, but I, I sure can remember the ambulance coming there and getting her and taking her away. But she died before they could help her. And they hunted this town. My brother-in-law, Marge's dad, was a cop here then. And he, they scoured this town over for that guy. And they, they never did find him. And here, do you know where he was hiding? there in the old brick building where they used to have the dances and things. There used to be some wooden steps at the back where you'd go up a, a stairway at the back to go into the dining room. You know. And he hid under there. Well, and what did his children do? They huh? just, his children were just abandoned then? Or? They, uh, yeah, they had, I think they had about three children. I don't know what ever become of them. But he got into an argument with her. I guess he'd been downtown drinking her. And he stabbed her with his ice pick, stabbed her in the back. They, on later years, they found him, though. They sent him to the pen. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that he died in the pen. Well, we have that story about um, Jeanette Taylor. Yeah. Which would have been before your time. Uh -huh. Now that was strictly a union mine owning problem, wasn't it? Yeah. That? I mean, that yeah. had strictly to do with that strike. That, uh, was that a, an a, attempt to break the strikers? To break the union, do you think? Yeah, just spite work, you know. Yeah. There was a lot of that went on. Yeah. Well, do you. 
What was that day that it closed? Do you remember that day? I'm just trying to think. It must have been around 1912. Well, I think I've got that in the papers, too. Because I, I know Mother used to go out and work, you know, and do washing and clean houses stuff like that, and she was a janitor down at the bank, and she used to have to go down the basement and fix the heating thing in the coal furnace, so I used to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go down with the so she wouldn't have to go in there alone, she was kind of nervous about going down that basement by herself. Oh, that's pretty early. Well, I, this, I ran across this in the Denver Post newspaper, and I hunted those dates up, so I should have that date someplace. Mm -hmm. But I, the impression I got from those news stories were that there, there might have been as much as $100,000 of union money that was in there so that they could then operate a mine to put the union men to work. Mm -hmm. And that the, I guess then if they closed the bank, why then they wouldn't get their money. But oh. I think the union was able to get the Louisville money out first. Yeah. No doubt there, everybody had a little money in there, you know. But there was, I think, between Erie and Lafayette and Louisville, there was something like two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And but they lost it in the Lafayette yeah. Bank. It closed first. They never made one thing. Never made, made a thing. Mm -hmm. They just lost it. And but then a lot of local people, just individuals, lost money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that man, did that man live here? Who, what was his yeah, name? Elberson. He lived up on the hill there. Uh, But did, then did he stay in town? No, he, he went left. He stayed. got out of here at night. Nobody knew where he went. But they finally heard he went to the state of Washington. Oh, he would have been. Oh, they'd have killed him if they got a hold of him. They'd have hung him. Well, now, was he the only man involved then? Was he? No, the, the cashier, but what was his name? He used to room over here at the, in this little house where Stupo lady lived in there, Miss Schmidt, and she was a dressmaker, and you know, she used to rent rooms out of storage, and his name was I can see him now, he was a tall, thin, light complected fellow. Stark, I think, was his last name. But these were all men who'd come in from outside, yeah. and had the bank, mm -hmm. and they, now, had they, when did the bank start? Do you have any idea? Oh, it was started before the strike. Yeah. A while before the strike. Well, isn't there a date on that building down there? Well, but I think that building was there before then. I don't think the, the date on the building, I don't think has anything to do with the bank. I think there was, um, there was a drugstore there. Well, yeah, but it was a wooden building. Wooden. You think it, that wooden building was torn down and they put up the bank? I can't. I have never been able to find anybody who I'm could tell sure. me that. that. It's an entirely different building, but I mean, the windows and the doors are different. Yeah. But you know, you couldn't. Nobody can remember when it was torn down and this was. Well, I think that date's at, what, 1894 or something, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know then the, the, the bank then reopened. I mean, a new bank was formed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, opened up in another yeah. place. They didn't go back to that building. No. And after that, then, I have, well, I forget 
forget what all it was. The post office, I know. Oh, yeah. Did it become a post yeah. office then right after it was a bank? Yeah, that or you can't resolve it. It's in the bank part there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you remember anything about the flu epidemic? Was that eight, 1918? It was here in Center Square. The doctor was afraid I'd get it. And they made a pest house out of the little brick school. And there was three or four people died in there from it. And they had kind of like a hospital in there. And another time we had an epidemic of black diphtheria here. Pest house, like they called it, you know, down there on the creek. The kids. Hmm. Well, I, no, I was the town then. There was something. I have, I can figure out when that would have been, according to the minutes of the trustees. But um, they just sort of vaguely refer to these things, and you're not really sure, you know, like yeah. Well, I'm not too sure they give a specific date either, you know. You can remember how long ago it was and when it should have been, but if you're right on the one, it's doubtful. Yeah. Uh, now, this has been down on Coal Creek. Yeah, down, right down there past Bella Vista. Oh, oh right, right, right straight south of Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. Coal Creek. Now, by 1918, when the flu pest house was held at the brick school, then the school had closed. That was no longer being used oh, no, as a school. Um, you know, when the high school used to be over here, that used to be the main, main of training shop. Yeah, we've got a picture. Now, this, the, the, the house, house where, the Jenkins house on Grand Street, that was never used as a hospital for the flu. No. That was the hospital earlier? And that was later, I think. Later? Well, no, no, it was earlier. Earlier. Earlier, yeah. Earlier. earlier. But that, was no, yes. that wasn't connected with the flu? Mm -mm. Because Leonard was born in 1918, and that was the year the flu was with that. Yeah. Well, let's see. The, one of the doctors out in a picture in front of that is Dr. Szymanski. Yeah, I know. You remember him? Do you remember when he was here? Yeah, I remember when he was here. What? What? He used to have a. I was just a kid, and he and my sister lived next door, you know. And, the, and he used to have upstairs there, was two a couple of three rooms, and he used to have a X-ray machine up there. And us kids used to go upstairs there to look at it, you know. And it 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 was just like a great big square box, sitting on a table of some kind, you know, and it had a great big wheel in the front of it, we remember, I remember, but just being a kid, you know, it was quite a curiosity. Oh, my guess, and it was really an x-ray? Yeah, really? uh-huh. Well, now, do you, can you and put one it? One of those nurses is Jenny Moffat, but I don't know which one. I mean, when that hospital, when that was being used as a hospital? Can you remember when it was? Oh, gee, it must have been in the 1903 or somewhere. Because I know I was just a little kid, you know, and I used to go to my sister's. And we'd go up there and have the doctor show us things. Was it used for that very long, do you think? Not too long. And then one time, they had so many kids in the school down there, you know, it went there up to the 12th grade. Mm -hmm. They had so many kids down there, they had two classes of school in there one time. Mm -hmm. Now, 
that was the, that building was the store building next door to Dr. Wolfer's house. And Mrs. Thurlaway says, well, Mrs. Wilkes said it was moved up there. And then Mrs. Thurlaway remembers that it had been, that's where the newspaper was. And yeah. it was located in there during the time when it was like moved. The world at home. Yeah. So now, it was the Black Diamond World first. Yeah. Then it would have been the hospital. Mm -hmm. Well, the building, this new wooden building, wasn't built till about 1905. So maybe this would have to have been a, could it have been a hospital after, up as late as 1908, or is that getting too late? I think it'd be about 1907. Seven, maybe. long dresses and that seems yeah late for mm -hmm. all those really long dresses but uh, I know the paper was there for a while too yeah first mm -hmm. and then it was made into hospital and then into a school after that yeah you said long about 1912 yeah because mm -hmm. it was so crowded and then they had in the Methodist church down there they had a couple of grades too same time in that little annex that they had there off the main church, you know. Yeah. That room they had there. Yeah. That's not a very big place. They had schools in there, they had a class. There were a lot of buildings moved around, weren't there? Oh yeah. Everything was someplace else. Mm -hmm. I got your papers, made copies of that, mm -hmm. so I have that down on record. And then uh, Dr. Boyd and his wife, you know, that was quite a tragedy, too. What to that? At that? Well, they had been to Denver, and they were coming home. They had a terrible rainstorm down at the bridge, you know, across the creek by May Hoppers. Well, it was all washed out underneath, of course, they didn't know it. It looked just like a puddle of water. Mm -hmm. George had that puddle of water in it. All washed out, and she drowned. And he had knocked him out. And how he ever got out, nobody knows. But he got out and managed to come to town. His office was down there in Mrs. Kansas' house, you know. That's where he lived. And uh, they went down and got her and tried to get her. Well, they did get her out. Now, was this out of a car, out of an automobile? Mm -hmm. What year was that? That was big. That must have been a. That was a lot of rain. That would have been a. Oh the yeah, it came down the creek. You know, it was a flash flood. That's what it was. And you see, it washed the pavement out there. But of course, he just thought it was a mud puddle, a puddle of water. You know drove into it and they went right down. And of course, being in the car, he managed to get out, but he couldn't get her out. See, it kind of knocked him out, I guess. It's a bit, well, then did he stay around yeah, for he very was, long? He was here for a while after that. And then, then he, he went, went up to Greeley. Really. He got married.